You can't fight everyone. And even if you could, it's going to become a very tiresome and potentially costly endeavor. So today I had a question that came from, uh, I believe it's Rodney McDonald. I apologize if I got your name wrong. Uh, but basically he's asking, how do you deal with moving homeless or drug addicts or prostitutes off of specific areas of property? And we're going to go over that in today's debrief. Yeah. Holy smokes, I'm no joke out the bullpen Bringing nothing but heat, leave you hanging like clothespins He's a beast when he goes in, ice cold frozen The first round draft pick, number one chosen Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Debrief I'm your boy A, typical security guard as always If you're getting any benefit from the videos that we are uploading Please like, share, and subscribe Just hit the button that I think is going to be today I'll put it right here okay and i would truly appreciate that so listen guys how do you move the homeless how do you move the drug addicted or even potentially prostitutes and unsavory characters or savory depending on how you roll off of property and guys listen there's a lot of topics that i come on here and i talk about that you know i'm trying to figure out uh as well but this is one avenue that I am very, very, very qualified to talk about because this is literally what I do on a daily basis. So I will say this, guys, it's a difficult task as a security guard, whether you're armed or unarmed, uh, to try and get people to do anything because right out of the gate, we've already talked about this in previous videos, right out of the gate, we're already dealing with the fact that we come in with so much baggage, right? In terms of how people view us and how they view our profession. So, you know, a lot of this goes back to uh, some of those videos on professionalism, some of those videos on uh, how you carry yourself how your uniform looks, right? If you're in shape, if you're not in shape, because how you come into the situation right off the bat can garner you either a lot of goodwill or can put you in a bad situation before you even get started. So first and foremost, I would say that how you carry yourself as an officer is probably gonna be one of the big determining factors. But here in Portland, we have what I call a multiplier, right? A multiplier is something that makes your already difficult situation even more difficult. And here in Portland, guys, listen, whether you're an anarchist or a drug addict, someone who just wants to live off of the system, or if you're a person that finds yourself in the homeless crisis, you typically have more rights than any average citizen that is here in Portland, right? So I'm going to uh, be moving in some, some video here. This is one of the areas known as Old Town or Old Chinatown. Uh, this is about four or five blocks from where I'm making this video right now. This area is saturated with homeless camps. It's saturated with rampant out in the open drug use. It's saturated with uh, prostitution and all kinds of of, of issues and this is actually one of the areas of town that is least policed it's almost as if the city and the city officials have turned this area over to uh, this group of individuals so when you're working with individual businesses that have hired security companies or individual security guards uh, to work as their proxy how do you motivate these people that are given uh, a lot of leeway in terms of how they set up their property uh, on public property, how do you motivate them to move? Well, my answer is very simple, guys. It's communication, right? And a lot of this communication, it has to start well before you make the attempt to try and get them to do whatever it is that you're wanting them to do. You're not going to be able, especially here in Portland, you're not going to be able to come in and strong arm a situation and force someone to move. 
Uh, there are, are very specific laws that protect the homeless here in Portland, uh, specific ordinances that give them a lot of, of leeway and area to, to do the things that they do. So one of the things that I have found is that it's almost like you have to take that same approach that you would take when you go into a foreign country. When U.S. forces go into Afghanistan or U.S. forces go into Iraq, they have to create something called goodwill. And we have to do that here working with the homeless as well. And I, I suggest that you guys do that as well. I carry on my person at all times a pack of cigarettes and I don't even smoke. But part of having those cigarettes is so that I can offer them to homeless people or people that are that are living on the streets just out of sheer conversation, strike up a conversation, introduce myself. And a lot of times I'm doing this in uniform. I'm giving them a cigarette, asking them about their day. I'm just trying to create that goodwill so that down the road, and this could be down the road later that day, this could be down the road, you know, a couple of weeks or a couple of months, and I run into that person, I've already established somewhat of a relationship with this person. And ultimately, getting people to comply with you, whether it's a homeless person on the street or a drug addict that you find in the bathroom, or even your girlfriend or wife, it all comes down to communication and relationships. If you can create these relationships, if you can create these inroads just on even a surface level, it goes so much further in trying to get them to comply with you down the road. There's a security company here in town called Echelon. Uh, I've been doing some work for them. These guys are amazing. And one of the things that I've learned from them is furthering this attitude of creating a relationship before you try and get any sort of compliance. You know, these guys are actually switching out uh, the tents for some of the people. They'll go up to a person that's on property that they're working for and they'll say, hey, look, you know, guys, listen, we can tell that you need a new tent. This tent seems to be, you know, diminishing. This can't be good for you. There's mold, uh, you know, maybe there's, there's vermin that are in it. How about we help supply you with a new tent but you gotta move off property in order to get that, right? And this is a very, you know, allied forces way of, of ingratiating yourself to the local, right? In order to get them to comply with you uh, down the road. So to answer your question, and I know that I get extremely long-winded, I'm sorry. Try not to look at your position as an enforcement officer, because at the end of the day, what really can you do? You're not gonna be able you know, more than likely in your capacity, you're not going to be able to make an arrest. You don't want to go hands on with this individual. So, you know, if things truly don't go the way that you want, you observe, you report, whether that's you're reporting it to your immediate supervisor or to the uh, location that you're working for, or if you have to call the police. But here in Portland, the police aren't going to show up nine times out of 10, right? and you're not gonna be able to go hands-on in a lot of situations. So take it more from a position of creating that relationship, that dialogue, trying to you know, just have these conversations with them, and that's gonna go a lot further. One more thing before I let you guys go. I also used to work as a prison guard, right? And working in a prison, a lot of times you're, you're one or two guards, right? in a bay, which is like, uh, you know, the housing unit. And that bay might have anywhere from 40 to 80 guys or more, depending on what kind of prison you're working in. And when you're working in a prison, you're not armed. You know, at the most, you might have pepper spray in some prison situations. So you are, even if you're the toughest guy in there, you know, if you take jujitsu twice a week, you got your blue belt, your brown belt, you're able to actually beat somebody's ass, like you're not gonna be able to take on 80 guys. So one of, the, one of the tips that I learned as a prison guard was figuring out who the shot callers were, right? Who are the big dogs that are in that bay? Now, you don't wanna do something that puts you in a situation where you know, you're breaking any sort of rules or you're violating any sort of policy, but understanding who the guys are that create the calls, make the calls, who call the shots in those prison bays, and, and having a relationship with them, again, a legal and proper relationship, but understanding the respect and weight that they carry, being able to have a relationship with that person and being able to talk to them in order to have them help get other people to uh, comply, right? 
and it's no different here on the street. There's certain people, whether you're working at a retail establishment or you're working uh, in a patrol area or you're working in a certain location, there are certain people that still within the hierarchy of, of that environment, they're calling the shots. And if you recognize who that person is, you're talking to that person, you're showing them respect, you're talking to them with respect. A lot of times, if you're having problems with other knuckleheads, you can approach that person, give them a cigarette and be like, hey, look, man, look, I'm having a problem with so-and-so. Can you do me a favor and talk to him? Can you get him off the block? Or this person has been in the bathroom for 15 minutes. You know, can you say something to him? And a lot of times having someone else that's in their environment, their world, um, that can go a lot, a long way in carrying weight to get people to comply.